Hello and welcome you're watching Business Today TV. I'm Sakshi Batra and on this show we're going to be discussing everything about the rupee, its fall and what's next for the Indian currency. All of that with an expert joining right in is a very special guest with me. Suganda Sachdeva joins in. She is the commodity and currency expert from Relegate Broking. Welcome Suganda and thank you so much for taking the time out for Business Today TV. Well, let's dive right in. I want to first begin my understanding from you. What is really causing the sharp decline and the continuous decline in the rupee against the dollar? It's a confluence of a lot of factors actually. It's been a gradual decline that we have seen since the beginning of year. Every executive month since the beginning of this year, we have seen a steep decline coming in Indian rupee. It has declined by around 6.3% year to date. It's broadly because we have seen a strong strength coming in dollar index this year of almost 10%. It's majorly driven by the stance changed by major central banks wherein the Fed has actually hiked interest rates by three times this year and the stance going forward is also going to be very aggressive. It's majorly driven by the fact that inflation has been soaring significantly higher. In US, if I talk about the inflation figures, it's currently standing at almost 8.6%, which is a 41-year high. So that's a major reason which has actually led the change in stance of major central banks. So globally, inflation is a major concern and that was triggered by the Russia-Ukraine war, which led to soaring commodity prices. We have seen strong gains coming in crude oil prices, energy prices and other commodity prices also, which has led to inflation soaring significantly higher. So apart from that, we have seen an atmosphere of risk aversion after this Russia-Ukraine war. And we have seen significant outflows coming in from domestic equities and bond market. So if I talk about the figures, it's been $29.7 billion of outflows from domestic equities and bond market. So that's precisely another reason because of which we have seen a broad-based decline coming in the Indian rupee. Having said, I think Indian rupee is still better placed as compared to its peers if you talk about the other emerging market currencies. If we look at Argentina peso or Turkish lira or Japanese currency, Japanese yen, so they have seen significant declines of more than 20%. As compared to that, Indian rupee is still better placed. So I think uh, we are going to see a lot of cushion coming in at 80 marks. So we have already seen a significant depreciation. RBI has been intervening in the market gradually and with the strong forex kitty of dollars 600 billion, close to dollar 600 billion. I think RBI, we are in a very strong position to curtail the steep depreciation of Indian rupee. But Sugata, what are the implications of this continuous uh, decline or the depreciation of the rupee against the dollar on the economy? Well, for now, the RBI seems to be, uh, you know, containing it after stepping in. But what are the larger implications really for the economy? So obviously, uh, our external finances are getting a major hit and our trade deficit is soaring. It's almost dollar $180 billion and there are concerns about CAD also. So obviously our import bill is rising with the rising crude prices and with the depreciating rupee, it's a vicious circle. Both of them are leading to uh, having a very major dent on the Indian economy. But yes, I think we are still very strong in terms of our longer term fundamentals. Inflation really has inched higher, but yes, it's still not that high if we compare it with the advanced economies. We are standing at 7.05% inflation. So it's slightly above the RBI's comfort zone. Besides this, RBI has also taken an aggressive stance in line with the advanced economy and also RBI has been tightening policy. We've already seen that RBI has hiked repo rates twice this year. So obviously we are trying to maintain an interest rate parity with the advanced economies to restrict the capital outflow. So that in that, considering all of these, I think we are in a better step. And also in terms of the GDP targets, India economy is likely to grow by around 75 to 8.2% this year. So I think uh, this trend might reverse going forward. We've already seen significant outflow, but then I think once the market digests this aggressive pace of rate hike by the key central banks and inflation starts to moderate, I think this trend of rupee depreciation might reverse. And we might uh, see Indian rupee erasing some of the losses by year end. So obviously, as of now, food prices have been inching higher. But then if you look at the soft commodity prices, they have kind of reversed some of their losses recently. And crude prices have also come off their recent highs of $1.130 a barrel. So that will certainly aid uh, the outlook for the Indian economy. And globally also, inflation is likely to ease somewhat. So 
considering all of that fed might also kind of change their tone towards the end of this so they might adopt a dovish stance because as of now there is a lot of chatter around the recession risk so that might force the fed to actually change their stance and that will restrict the uh, advance that we have seen in dollar index and that will aid the indian rupee going forward Right now, Suganda, help all our viewers really understand where do you see the future of the rupee, say by the year and next six months, uh, where do you see the rupee really moving? How much downside, if at all, from here on? And what could be some of the targets that you may have uh, in your mind for the rupee by year end? So if I look at the current fundamentals as well as the longer term fundamentals, I think near term bias is certainly negative. We are looking at further depreciation probably towards 80 mark and even 81 mark cannot be ruled out considering the concerns about aggressive rate hikes and the inflation which has been inching higher. But then towards the end of this year, as I maintained, inflation might ease somewhat with the cooling off of commodity prices and the markets would actually digest the rate hike cycle of the advanced economies. So by year end, I think Indian rupee would appreciate towards 77.5 odd levels. So the broad range, if I define, that's going to be 77.5 to 81 on the downside for Indian rupee. Right now, Suganda, help all our viewers really understand over the next course of six months or so, given the kind of predictions that you are giving, um, help them understand what should be the right strategy that as consumers they must follow. So yes, obviously the volatility is likely to be very high for the Indian rupee as of now. So as of now, the importers should keep hedging because we are seeing a near-term depreciation. So whatever other things, they should actually hedge their papers. But then by 81 levels, I think exporters would be in a position to actually hedge their receivables. So as of now, it's certainly a pain area for the importers. But yes, going forward, and exporters are gaining at the moment. But at 81 levels, we are not looking at India to be beyond 81 levels. RBI will certainly step in to curb excessive depreciation of the Indian rupee. Thanks a lot, Suganda, for being with us on Business Today TV and helping us with all those insights on the rupee and the future of the rupee going forward from here. If you like the video, do like, comment, share and subscribe.